What's up, YouTube? It's Carolina Calvin coming back to you with another video. And welcome to my NFL 2017 Week 9 game recap between the Carolina Panthers and the Atlanta Falcons. The Carolina Panthers were able to pick up the 20 to 17 win at home against the Atlanta Falcons. Running game looked good. Passing game was another story, but you know, Carolina's a team they want to run the ball. They don't have a lot of talent in terms of receivers, so running the ball is really the strength of the team but uh quickly getting into the numbers for the Atlanta Falcons Matt Ryan 24 38 313 yards two touchdowns one pick felt as though he played well he had a good pocket majority of the time Carolina wasn't able to get consistent pressure on him throughout the game um you know they got they sacked him twice they hurried him a few um a few other times for the most part he was really able to survey the field Despite Carolina bringing blitzes as well. Um, looking at Atlanta's rushing, Devontae Freeman, 11 carries, 46 yards. Tevin Coleman, 5 carries, 5 yards. And uh, Gabriel, 1 carry for 3 yards. Rushing game wasn't too great. Um, really, outside of a 20 yard Devontae Freeman carry, they didn't really do that well in terms of rushing. So they had 18 carries, 53 yards, 2.9 average. So I felt as though Carolina did a really good job against the run because Atlanta had no reason to go away from it because the game was relatively close throughout. Uh, the biggest deficit was, I believe, 20 to 10 that, uh, that they were in. You know, and that was a point in the game they were up 10 to 0 um, early on in the first half. So they really had no reason to go away from the running game. So I think Carolina did a really good job just you know looking you know looking at the game. Uh, Atlanta's receiving Julio Jones, six receptions, 118 yards. Should have been more because he had that one drop right in the end zone, double move. He's wide open, and he just dropped the football. Uh, Gabriel, three receptions, 56. Hooper, three receptions, 30, um, 36 as well. Hardy, two receptions, 26. Muhammad Sanu, three receptions, 23, and a touchdown. Tevin Coleman, one reception, 19, and a touch. And Devontae Freeman, one reception for 18. So he was really, um, Matt Ryan was, was really able to move the ball to you know different guys. Um, and there were some missed opportunities. There were some missed opportunities. And it, you know even despite that, I still felt as though the Atlanta offense was still good in terms of passing offense. It was just, you know, the Julio Jones touchdown was huge even despite that they still were able to get back in the game at the end on you know with the Tevin Coleman touchdown on a really nice play um really good blocking so I, I would give credit to the passing offense or the Falcons really outside the one interception um late in the first half Matt Ryan which did lead to a score for the most part they played pretty good from pass blocking to you know receivers able to create separation and Matt Ryan with accurate throws. They played well. Defensively, I felt as though the Atlanta back end played well. Um they were they were able to make Cam Newton there were some really tight throws. Uh pretty much every throw to Cam Newton and you know, majority of the throws Cam Newton made were contested throws. And you got to give credit to the back end. Front seven for Atlanta, not so much. Um, Carolina was really able to run the ball on them, uh, mainly with McCaffrey, not Jonathan Stewart. And then, of course, they lost contain of Cam Newton a lot, which is something you just can't do, knowing that you know this guy's a running quarterback. You're coming in, that's what you're going to game plan for. He was really able to break contain a lot, and you, you could just go look at his rushing numbers. So I, I felt as though that's what they really struggled at was against the run and inability to consistently contain Cam Newton from you know keep him from getting outside of the pocket and making him have to make those tight throws down the field. They didn't do a good enough job, but the back end was good. Um, moving over to Carolina. 
Cam Newton, 13 of 24, 137 yards, zero touchdowns, zero picks. Passing game wasn't great. You know, all the th- majority of the throws were contested by cornerbacks. And, you know, you just, you just see Cam in the pocket. Guys aren't getting open down the field, really nowhere to go. This is, this is a game where the rushing attack was going to be the main focus. Hence why they ran it as many times as they did. Speaking of the rushing attack, Cam Newton, 9 carries, 86 yards in the touchdown. Christian McCaffrey, 15 carries, 66 yards in the touchdown. Jonathan Stewart, 11 carries, 21 yards. He was terrible in this game. He had a uh, he had fumbles on back-to-back possessions. He was terrible. And you know, even when he didn't fumble, he wasn't getting a lot of yards. It, 1.9 average. He's just not making guys miss. Yeah, he'll break some tackles. A lot of it is you know, fighting through defenders, and when you fight through a defender, on a lot of you got one draped over you. Other guys are gonna punch at the ball. Hence, why he lost those two fumbles. Just go back and look at those plays and how many defenders are around him. You can see why he fumbled. He essentially got benched. They ran him a couple other times after that, but he's just not picking up the yards. Christian McCaffrey was way more effective in this game. Curtis Samuel. Uh, Russell Shepard both had end of rounds. Curtis Samuel, one carry for 14. Russell Shepard, one carry for 11. So, uh, a total of 38 carries, 201 yards, two touchdowns, a 5.3 average. So, the running running game, mainly from Cam Newton, Christian McCaffrey, was really good. It was really good. Um, looking at Carolina's receiving, um, Devin Funches, five receptions, 86. You know, they're not going to put up a lot of numbers in this regard. Christian McCaffrey, five receptions, 28. Curtis Samuel, three receptions, 23. And that's it. They only took, threw the ball 24 times, only completed 13 uh, passes. So you're not going to get a bunch of yards there. Defensively, Luke Keekly, Kirk Coleman, they were everywhere. I felt as though where they really struggled was the pass rush. And they. Really, um, it really kind of exposed some of the guys in the secondary, especially Daryl Worley, who's terrible. It really exposed a guy like him in a in in pass coverage because of the inability of the off them the defensive line to really get pressure on Matt Ryan. Like I said, they sacked him twice, and that was on back to back plays. I believe coming in, I believe it was in the second half. Might have been in the first half. Um, I don't remember exactly. But other than that, they didn't sack him any more than that. And they only heard him a few other times. For the most part, he had a clean pocket. And even when he was pressured, he was able to make the accurate throws down the field. You know, Carolina brought blitzes, still really couldn't get to him. So this is the one game where I saw, really outside of maybe the New Orleans game, where they couldn't get really uh, get a bunch of pressure. The time when they did get um, pressure, they got a turnover. Um, the interception at the end of the half by Matt Ryan. So it's really important because they have one of the better front fours in football in terms of uh, sack numbers. Um, I believe they're still in the top three, top five, or something like that. But in this game, it wasn't too good. Uh, Looking at team stats, time of possession, Atlanta 27 minutes, 8 seconds. Carolina, 32 minutes, 52 seconds. And and that's mainly the running game. Carolina ran the ball 38 times. It was effective. They were able to pick up first downs, move move the chains, and stuff like that. So, of course, they're going to burn up the uh, majority of the time. Third down efficiency, both were bad. Atlanta, 4 of 12. Carolina, 4 of 13. Uh, One thing that really hurt Atlanta was penalties. Eight penalties, 70 yards. Carolina five points to twenty nine. Um, Carolina, Carolina did lose the turnover battle with the two Jonathan Stewart turn um, fumbles. That was really early in the game. Atlanta capitalized on. They were able to get up on them early ten uh, ten to zero. And of course, you know you had the Matt Ryan interception at the end of the half, which helped Carolina really get back into the game. But looking ahead, there were two, uh, both um, all four teams in division play 
Um, New Orleans ended up beating Tampa Bay. Of course, Carolina um, beat Atlanta. It's gonna come. It's gonna come to the Carolina New Orleans game later on in the season to more more than likely to decide who wins the division. New Orleans already beat Carolina, so it's going to be important coming to the end of the season. Uh, that game, Atlanta, they just haven't looked as good. And you know, Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay's a mess. You know, Carolina, you know, ended up beating them last week. So it's going to come down to that New Orleans Carolina game to really decide this division. Obviously, other games are definitely going to matter, but that one, people are really going to be looking at coming into the season. Atlanta was the favorites, and the other team that people were high on was Tampa Bay. And those teams, two teams are at the bottom of the division. The two teams that people didn't even expect to win the division are the two top teams in terms of records in the NFC South. You know, that's what you're going to get with football. But uh, heading into next week, I believe, I want to say Carolina, um, and just looking at it really quickly. Carolina has Miami. Uh, I believe it. Yeah, that's a, um that's a Carolina home game, and Atlanta has Dallas. So that's gonna be a tough game because Dallas is starting to play better football, running game. We gotta see how Elliott if he's gonna play, but it's it's getting to must win. I felt as though this this game was a must win against you know there was that first Atlanta's first division game. It was a must win, especially against a team that has a better record than you. And, you know, that you, you really, this division is playing better. New Orleans is playing good. Carolina's, you know, been able to win games at least. So it's gonna it's getting to a point where it's a must, it's must win for Atlanta. But uh, let me know what you think down in the comment section. If you watch the game, if you like this video, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe. Thanks for watching.